let's see what season 10 has in store for us. Good? Good to go. Oh, it's Gavin. Hey everyone, I'm Gavin Winter, Senior Systems Designer on the Overwatch team. If you don't know who this guy is, this guy's a genius. Back with another developer update to talk to you a little bit about some of the upcoming competitive changes. My teammate, Senior Research Scientist Natasha Miller, not know will tell person. us about updates to Defense Matrix a little later. A few weeks ago, New we people. heard from Aaron that heroes are coming out of the battle pass and they'll be available for free the day they launch. True. He also talked about the new Mythic Shop as well as the upcoming Clash playtest. He closed with a little sneak peek at what we're covering in this. Yeah, I want to go back really quick. First off, this looks cool. Um, they didn't really talk about it, like being able to buy Mythics, but like the way this looks and it's in the shop, I would be shocked if you can't buy your way through mythics was the upcoming honestly it would be kind of stupid on them not to have a way to buy mythics to be honest with you Flash that's just like a, that's just a close miss. with a little sneak peek but. at what we're covering in this developer update season 10 is just around the corner and we're excited but honestly at the same time though i don't blame them for not really talking about it because people go oh they're just trying to sh they're trying to just make more money and like okay. aaron said you can buy it he did say you could buy it i think he said i thought he said that was like I remember I asked him kind of about it and he was like, well, you can earn it through. And then like, he just like went on about earning it instead of like buying it with like money, money. Um, but honestly, even if they didn't answer it, I kind of understand. Okay, sorry, let me okay. just let it go. Season just 10 the thing through, is we'll just back. around the corner and we're excited to share these changes with you, starting with how we're updating the way you can play with friends. Huge. So let's talk about exactly how that'll work. We think Overwatch is at its best when you're playing with friends. So our new True. system in season 10 lets any rank group with any other rank. That means, for example, if you're plat and you've never been able to group with your friend in bronze, you will be able to do that now. We'd refer to your group as a wide group because you and your uh, friend and are pretty random far chatters come in There are some trade-offs for wide play. groups though. They only play against other wide groups, the queue times could be longer, and the matches will be sillier. We'll still use our role delta tech to try to match you against similarly shaped groups. So if you're a plat tank and your friend is a bronze support, we'll try to find another plat tank and bronze support to match you two against. At the end that of the is going to probably be such long queue times. Holy shit. You want plat one a duo? Uh, yeah, I don't know you. Sorry. Wide match, you'll see a new modifier just for this system. Avoiding boosting is really important to us. So the wider your group is, the less your rank will change after any match. If you're bronze and you're a group really? with a champion player, you can expect almost no change to your rank, regardless of the outcome. We That's like old, like beginning of Overwatch stuff. Like if you remember old 2016 Overwatch, there were times where like the Giga 5 stacks were on, just like, pot, like stomping like the streamer stacks, and they'd get like 2SR expect all this to be a huge match quality win for our solo players because they'll never play against wide groups we think of groups that are close in rank as narrow so narrow matches will there is another part of that though that you guys you guys are all going yay no boosting there's actually another part of that that you're not thinking of that means that if you decide to play ranked with your friends that aren't as good you won't be punished so like if you're not gaining or losing much at all that means you can go, like, if you have friends that are, like, plat players and you're a GM player and you never get to play with them, you could go play with them for a bit. And even if you lose four games straight, that might be, like, one GM game worth of losses. Like, isn't that kind of cool, though? That's kind of smart. I like that. Will only be solos and narrow groups. Sorry, I'm going to back up a little bit. Let him just say that part again. Groups. We think of groups that are close in rank as narrow. So narrow matches will only be solos and narrow groups. All this means that you'll be able to choose whether you want to prioritize the highest match quality or playing with friends. We're also expecting to see fewer smurfs after these changes too, since we know some players were only creating alt accounts to play competitive with their friends. We've heard your request for more void slots, but having more than three in our current Wait, system what? breaks matchmaking for high skilled players. We realize that basing our avoid count on that restriction hamstrings the system for 99% of players though. So to add all the new features we're about to discuss, we had to rethink what it means to avoid players from the ground up. First off, we're increasing the number of avoid slots to 10. We're also going to let you pin some avoided players so that they never fall off your list. The trade-off we make to get these features is related to our next new feature. You'll now be able to- I can see the tweets already. There's gonna be so many tweets of like random players just being like pinned. It's like, this is my perma. Prioritize your avoid list. Yo, thank you for the I appreciate it, dude. Much man where players at the top are most likely to be avoided. For players below Grandmaster, that's most of us, you can expect all 10 avoid slots to be reliable, but 
we still want to give you the tools to organize your list by how much you dislike the players on it. For our highest skill players, this feature is particularly important because if we can't find a balanced match, we'll start ignoring players at the bottom of the list in order as queue time increases. Wow. Another area we're addressing will bring changes to our lever penalties for unranked and competitive play. Right now on the unranked side, Wait, our penalties what? kick in when you leave four out of your last 20 games and get worse when you leave six out of 20. We aren't changing yeah. those, but we are adding a more lenient five minute penalty if you've left two out of 20. What? A much more harsh 48 hour penalty if you've left 10 out of your last 20 games. Yeah, what about all the through the middle of that? I'm fine with that. Dude, two matches out of 20 is insane. For unranked? That is legitimately crazy talk. Now, there aren't a lot of players leaving more than 50% of their matches. I'm gonna let them talk and then I'm gonna go back. But they do exist. And we think the game would be better without them most of the time. On the competitive side, we're closing another edge case by suspending any players that leave more than 10 matches a season. We're also gonna start counting matches completed and competitive toward the 20 game window for unranked. Finally, I wanna to talk to you about our- Hang on, what? On the competitive side, we're closing another edge case by suspending any players that leave more than 10 matches a season. We're also going to start counting matches completed and competitive toward the 20 game window for unranked. Okay, that's finally. I didn't know they weren't doing that already, first off. Okay, this is actually a super important chart. Look at this. If you leave one game of unranked in, within 20 games, you get a warning. If you leave, leave two or more, two or three, you get five minutes out of 20 games. Four or five games left, which now you're getting up there. This is like where it gets a little bit weird, is 20 minutes. But six and nine games is four hours. 10 plus games left is 48 hours, right? But this is gonna incrementally go up. So like, you're still gonna get hit with the five minutes. You're gonna hit with five minutes, five minutes, 20 minutes, 20 minutes, four hours, four hours, four hours. So you'll like never even get here to this 10 games plus. Like it literally won't happen. But the weird one is this right here. Like one to two games is insanely low. I don't think it should be anything lower than like four. I think anything lower than four is crazy talk. Um, if people are leaving 10 of 20 after six four hour penalties, just ban them. <laughs> yeah, but like, let's go even further. One game left in competitive is 15 minutes. I think that's standard. It's always been like that. Two games left is an, is two hours. Three games left is eight hours. Four games left is 20 hours. Five games left is a competitive season ban. This is within 20 games, but there's the big one at the bottom where if you leave 10 games in a season, you just get a competitive season ban. So like if you have really bad internet, holy f you're screwed. Um, granted, I, I actually don't think this one is as bad. Um, over here, this is actually probably pretty good to be honest with you. Uh, if you're leaving 10 games a season, that's a fucking lot, though. Like, 10 games a season, that's a little much. Five games left within 20 games, that's a lot, too. Like, you're probably throwing some people's games like crazy. So, like, I'm actually not that mad about these. The only ones I'm a little bit weird about is, like, one and two games. Because, like, what happens if you have a DC, and then you think your internet's fixed, and then you DC again, right? Like, once you get the second DC, most people are like, okay, like, my, my internet's cooked for the day. Like, I won't play anymore. But like two hour ban is still a lot, you know, uh, but like, I guess at that point, then the logic is all oh, the two hour ban shouldn't really matter too, because you know that you're caught. But I'm assuming you also can't play quick play. So like, you know, or the Overwatch 2 server crash. True. What happens if the servers crash? The server crashes don't like the server crashes in the past. The only big problem it creates is like you lose some some rank and then you just get it back. But if you can't play the game for multiple hours because of that, Competitive penalties only apply to competitive play. Okay, that's good to know. So if you get banned for two hours, you can still play quick play. That's pretty good, actually. Um, but yeah, the, the thing is, this is crazy talk. The unranked one is actually, this is legitimate insanity. Um, the, the Two games left, and you get a five minute penalty. Like you will actually just kill, kill casuals from your game. I'm, I, I promise you, I, I literally promise you. I don't care what data you have. I know the data probably shows that the games are better, but like there needs to be like a reasonable threshold. And I two games of unranked is not reasonable to me. Cause like what happens is at that point is like you queue in 
and you're waiting for friends to get on and then one of your friends hops on you're like i'm not gonna finish this game so you hop in and you play with them and you play with them like three games in a row and then another friend hops on so you both leave the game to go join them and play another quick play game and you can't play for five minutes that's legitimate crazy talk like that's crazy talk so anyways all right let's continue um up here okay. their edge case by suspending any players that leave more than 10 matches a season we're also going to start counting matches completed and competitive toward the 20 game window for unranked finally i want to talk to you about our improved anonymity features we already had a streamer oh. mode but we're making this okay. feature more useful to Bring all players not just streamers right now this feature is client side only which means it only we'll just finished the game okay i'm gonna say this really quick before you go into this because like this is actually hopefully a good part and i want to talk about this and let this cook dude it's an unranked video game game mode right it's unranked it's not supposed to be that serious i know that the overwatch team said in the past that they want quick play to be like ranked i don't give a fuck if that's their stance i think it's wrong I think that you can still treat the game seriously and like not want people jumping off the map and throwing the game while also understanding that it's your not fucking super serious game mode. If you really want to go that route, make an unranked queue. But I know that the reason why they don't make an unranked queue is because they don't want to make the queue times too long because we already struggle with queue times. So you have quick play and you have ranked. But if you want a middle ground, you need to make a middle ground that says unranked. So that's ranked without the numbers. And then you can treat that super seriously. But if something is supposed to be a quick drop in game mode, I do not give a fuck if that's your stance. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's stupid. And it's going to turn people against you more and more over time. And people aren't going to remember the games that somebody finished out. They're not going to remember the game like, oh, I finished my quick play game because nobody left. They're going to remember the game where they left and they got a five minute ban or they left to play with some friends and got another five minute ban. Or they're going to remember that somebody just started jumping off the map the entire time because they don't want to get the quick play ban. So they just start jumping off the map to get the game over with or just AFK and spawn. That's what you'll remember. It's not dramatic. That's literally what will happen. That is 100% what will happen. It's true. That is what happens. That's what people remember. So like when you sit there and like, well, they, they, uh, they said this, I don't care. They're wrong. I'm sorry. They're wrong. So yeah, I don't like that. That's a stupid change. Um, let's move on though. Let's get on the stream mode because hopefully back to good things. Streamer mode. But we're making this feature more useful to all players, not just streamers. Right now, this feature is client side only which means it only yep. changes how players' names appear on your screen. And it's the useless, big change yeah. we're making is adding server-side functionality, which means we'll change how your name appears on everyone's screens in your match. We think this is great for players who may experience harassment because of their battle tag and just want to queue up without yep. any chance of that happening. Yep. Don't forget to report players that harass you or anyone else, though. And speaking of reporting, don't worry. Players in streamer mode being disruptive in text chat or voice can still be reported, avoided, and blocked, and penalties will still apply to them in exactly the same way as normal, because we still know their name behind the scenes. Next, Natasha will talk to you about our main initiatives to combat. So basically, for the longest time, the stream mode has been useless. It only protects from your own screen. Now, the stream mode is an actual legit stream mode. When you load into a game, it'll say like, you know, like, I don't know, I'm sure there'll be more info, but it's like Tracer 3 or whatever the fuck it is, but. Thank fucking God, dude. I, I can't tell you how happy I am for that. Seriously, like playing Overwatch on like drop days has always been a little bit tough because just getting hardcore stream sniped or hardcore stream ghosted. You don't know what ghosting is. Basically, it's they don't actually watch your stream. They just see your name. And they go, wait, is that Flutz? And then they pull up my stream and then they actively just start doing random shit. It's different than someone sniping your game. It's just like bumping into people and like everyone knows. So yeah, I hope you guys know I genuinely appreciate this change. Thank fucking God. Thank that you. Disruptive behavior. Thank you, Gavin. Hiya, I'm Natasha Miller, a senior research scientist at Hello. Blizzard working on Defense Matrix for Overwatch. While we are always working in many areas of combating disruptive behavior, today I want to talk about disruptive chat. I'll also touch on some of the tools that we're improving to help keep the community safe. Disruptive chat can really negatively affect someone's experience in game. True. In our focus to curb this disruptive behavior, we are taking a multi-prong approach that will roll out over several seasons. Today, I'll discuss the first two coming out in the next few seasons. In our first approach, we will prevent players at endorsement level zero from using text or voice chat. 
to be. I've never seen someone with endorsement level zero, though. I always see endorsement level one. So what is zero? Like they've never played a game before? Be clear, the only way to get to endorsement level zero is by having your account action for an in-game infraction. Even brand new players start at endorsement level one. So Wait, oh, so that's how that works. We will prevent players at endorsement level zero from using text or voice chat. To be clear, the only way to get to endorsement level zero is by having your account action for an in-game infraction. Oh. Even brand new players start at endorsement level one. So these are players that have proven themselves to be bad actors, so much so in the past that they received a penalty. This feature would allow those players to take a forced break in team and match channels until they work their way back up to endorsement level one. And wow. from there and all higher levels, chat would work as it did before. Remember, the best way to work your way back up to endorsement level one is to demonstrate good teamwork by trying your best, helping your team, and using the in-game ping system. In our second approach, we will remove chat functionality for spectators. Spectators don't have an in-game need to use use the chat channels. And by removing their ability to chat, we remove a channel that is increasingly being used by bad actors. Along with these- I've noticed that. I never thought about that, but I've noticed it. It's only for quick play and arcade custom game is not effective. That's what I assumed. I've actually noticed this before. Holy shit, that's actually smart. Improvements. We are looking at making it easier and faster to report any reportable offense bin match. At the moment, our numbers indicate that. Can I, hang on, I gotta get to that. What are they saying with these improvements? It's increasingly faster. Increasingly being used by bad actors. Along with these improvements, we are looking at making it easier oh, making and it faster, faster to it. report any reportable offense Season 12. bin match. Okay. At the moment, our numbers indicate that most reporting is done towards the end or post match. Yeah. And one reason for this is that it's not quick to report min match. However, this could put pressure on players to remember that they need to report, who to report, and yeah, what to report them I've for, forgotten before. all after the match. And at that point, they are likely more interested in just starting the next match. Yeah. So we are hoping that by making it faster to report mid-match, more players will use the reporting system. This is very important because we rely on players to help us know what is happening in matches so that our mitigation systems can be more effective and reliable. Overall, making Overwatch a safer community for everyone. Player feedback is a vital part of improving and optimizing these types of features. So we want to create even more avenues for you to share your thoughts with us. In season 11, we're introducing the first iteration of player surveys into Overwatch 2. Player surveys? This won't happen after every game because survey participants will be chosen at random among the player base. The survey will be prompted after the progression screen at the end of match flow. This means that you'll be able to watch the play of the game, give endorsements, and review progression without getting interrupted. Once the progression screen is closed, the survey will prompt the player for their feedback. Both console and PC players will get the option to give us feedback via a QR code. PC players may I have to make the joke. I don't know what it is with millennials, but every fucking millennial loves QR codes. I don't know what it is. They put them everywhere. I've never used a, I'm like tail end millennial. I've like almost never used a QR code my whole fucking life. How would this even work? <laughs> the option to give us feedback via a QR code. PC players may also choose to open the link in a separate browser. Surveys oh. will ask questions so about- So a QR code will pop up on the screen and then you take your phone, you scan it and take a survey. That's actually crazy. Game, including new modes, events, features, and how you feel about the way we're mitigating disruptive play. Wow. We're excited for this feature and we look forward to continuing Holy to improve shit, the game actually. as we gather your feedback. These are just a few of the things we have been working on in this space. We will continue to bring you updates on our progress mitigating disruptive behavior via the Defense Matrix blocks, which will get a refresh in the coming seasons to include even more on the impact this work is having in the community through transparency metrics. Defense Matrix and Competitive will always be core to Overwatch and will continue iterating, improving, and of course, listening closely to your feedback on these systems. So please keep sharing your thoughts with us and we can't wait to show you what we've been working on in season 10 and beyond. See you soon. Natasha said you will not be getting an outtake out of me today. <laughs> Well, Zero that guys. clip just came off. Any reportable event in... And they get... And they get worse. Every... I get it, dude. I've been there. <laughs>
and reliable. You got so close to the end. He's coming back for another pass. <laughs> Circling. You know what the funny thing is, is, uh, dude, whenever I had to record intros or ad reads for retro, there was like a bajillion takes of me going like, reading a sentence like, oh, with, uh, you know, with uh, uh, NordVPN, you can, <sighs> okay, all right. <clears throat> and then I get to do it like 16 times in a row. <laughs> also, I do get to point out really quick, did you notice that they used the airplane noise, they used Mercy? F-22 Mercy Raptor, or F-22 Raptor Mercy meme is uh, alive and well. <clears throat> alive and well that was, uh, that was pretty good I still completely disagree on the quick play changes I think these are actually legitimately insane um, I didn't actually get to go over the avoid one really quick let's see what this says most likely to be avoided oh so it's no longer guaranteed then it's just most likely pinned avoided players are never replaced when new avoided players are on the list new avoided players replace the oldest unpinned avoided players on the list so that's crazy like that probably says to me like if you're super high rank like top 50 and you're queuing at like four in the morning when there's nobody on especially if you play like a really populated role like dps and you put avoid people like tanks let's say you avoid like three tank players at night there like might not be a game for you so yeah you might actually end up getting one. You know there's gonna be an internal leaderboard of Avoid I made the joke earlier when I was watching this. I said, I can't wait for the Twitter post already because apparently, so a pinned ones, uh, pinned ones never go away. So people are gonna have like screenshots of their like perma avoids. Like, you know, it's just like, they never take them off the list. It's like, they just live there. Oh man, yeah, there's gonna definitely be an in-game avoid tier list for sure. Um, new avoided players replace the oldest unpinned avoided players on the list. Oh, so, okay, so you also don't have to go back and like unavoid somebody and then add somebody, like, you can just like keep cycling through as that throughout the day. That's kinda nuts. Uh, avoided player number 11 avoided one minute ago. And most likely to be avoided, least likely to be avoided. But, if you want this player to not to be avoided from this one, you probably want to like unavoid people down here. You're gonna have to like make a list. <laughs> See, this most number one avoided player gets flown to Blizzard HQ and beat with an hammer. <laughs> I know this. I already, I already have an idea of what the list is gonna look like. I've, I already know, I already know Attack Zero would be on mine for sure. <laughs> so fish thing for the gifty. I appreciate it. Okay. Defense Matrix update season 10 and beyond. This is chunky, by the way, this is long. So strap in, buckle up. We're back with a new Defense Matrix update on our efforts to keep Overwatch 2 a fun, safe, and inclusive experience for everyone. Our latest developer update revealed new features that aim to bring friends together while protecting you from disruptive players. So let's dive a bit deeper into these changes and see what you can expect in coming seasons. Playing competitive with friends. Overwatch 2 has always been a game best played with friends. However, in competitive play, it may not always work to group up if your friends are too far from your rank. That's why we're introducing the Y groups in Season 10, and you'll be able to play with your friends in competitive no matter their rank. So what exactly is a wide group? A wide group is when the highest and lowest ranked players are too far apart in skill tiers and divisions. Any groups with diamond or lower ranked players that are more than five skill divisions apart are a wide group. Any groups with a diamond or lower ranked player. Okay, so that would be um, like, for example, diamond one to plat one, that is five. So if they were diamond one to plat two, it would be two, that would be a wide group, right? Um, okay. Any groups with masters players that are more than three skill divisions apart are also wide groups. Wow. That's actually pretty aggressive. Um, <clears throat> so that means if you're say GM one and you play with your friend who's GM five, that's a wide group. Wow. Uh, finally, any groups that have a grandmaster or, oh, actually, nope, it's gonna be worse. And Grandmaster or Champion player are also wide groups regardless of how many skill divisions apart they are. Oh! 
wait a minute wait a minute that's actually that's actually kind of nuts um this is actually has a big implication because the soup the really wide groups they said in the video that you don't really gain or lose much rank so if you play with a five stack of grandmaster or champion players you're getting like all for rank there's a good and a bad from that the good is that you're probably not gonna have the 4 a.m. can let's run goats on Australia people uh, because they're getting absolutely no rank and it's basically worthless to do unless you're top 10 and like you just need like a few points to beat whoever's like rank 2 or rank 1 right the other implication you might see teams start to come back like teams start playing ranked again together uh, like back in the day you know you would sometimes just see like NRG queuing together you know what I mean you see like NRG or um, I don't know like, like uh, 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 the French team I forget off the top of my head but it was like there was you would see these random teams just playing ranked and they wouldn't get much rank if they won but they still all played together right no I'm, I'm talking not not Overwatch like Rogue Rogue I'm talking like 2016 2017 Overwatch right this would mean that they're not punished really for losing right so I can't I don't, I'm very curious to see how this would go. Uh, there is either there is either a really good timeline or a really bad timeline that this could go down, and I, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, with this new Q option comes some trade-offs. For one, Q times will be longer as we work to pair you with other wide groups. Using Roll Delta Tech to ensure the match is as close as possible. For example, a wide group with a Platinum player and a Bronze player will be matched against another group with similar skill distribution to try and deliver the fairest match possible. However, some matches may not appear to be as balanced as you may encounter opponents who are much, very difficult, or sorry, very different in skill level than you are. Thankfully though, such encounters won't necessarily have as much of an impact on your progress in the competitive ranks. There will also be a new modifier at the end of the map. Like, okay, they said they said it again here. Like, there's there's so many implications of this. Like, I'm actually kind of kind of excited. You know, playing solo into a five stack is miserable. Oh yeah, for sure. But you know what really makes it miserable more than anything is loading into that game, getting fucking shit stomped, and then losing like an entire rank, like games worth of rank. So like now you have to go back and win another game, and like you just got shit stomped. That's what sucks. But like the way this is written so far. It's like if you get shit stopped in stack stacks versus stacks, like you you'd barely lose anything at all. Like it's kind of it kind of cooked. Uh, there will also be a new modifier at the end of the match when playing in a wide group. It wouldn't be fair for lower skilled players to be directly boosted into higher ranks when playing they uh, when they group with higher skilled players. So some groups, depending on the skill gap, are likely to see little to no change in their skill progression. This helps ensure that high skill players don't boost their lower ranked friends. Um, okay, so there's another end to this that is basically like, what if they're really close? Like they're all GM or all champion or whatever. Maybe you still get like a decent amount of rank won or loss, um, but we'll have to see how it goes. That's crazy though. I'm not gonna lie, this is, I'm, I'm kind of excited for that. Solo players will only play with other solo players. So you're saying earlier, like you don't want to, you don't like playing against five stacks. You won't. Solo players will only play with other solo players or narrow groups. So I think the narrow groups though is like the spooky part because I don't know if this counts as like duo Q only or tr like trio, like very small ones, but they, uh, it could, it still could be five stacks though. Um, the only thing is it would be like very 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 close right like they have to be super close look up players have different skill level in each role damage tank support soul players will always match with other soul players or narrow groups wide groups of four are not allowed all groups are wide so you will not be able to five stack against solo players in gm or champion is that correct because they're automatically considered wide if you are a champion or GM player, you literally can never go against a stack unless you're probably borderline GM and you play against a master stack that are really close together. So wait, wait a minute, hang on. What about trio Q? Is it solo only? Or what about like duo or or sol or trio? 
Ensuring players play against wide groups. This also means we won't allow a wide group of four players to queue because solo players do not join matches with wide group. Solo players do not join matches with wide group. This change should encourage players to not play on alternate accounts when they want to play with their friends. You can look forward to this competitive matchmaking begins in season 10. So, this is pretty good though. Duo trio will be called a wide slash narrow group depending on rank spread. Uh, that's not true though, because this graphic says all groups are wide depending if they're champ champion or grandmaster. So does that mean if you duo queue and GM or champion that you just are just f***ed? Simply put, if you are GM or champion, any group size you are in will be wide. So if you, so what you're saying is then if you're duo queued, you could play against a five stack. Wouldn't that just like kill duo queue and trio queue actually? If you, it would, it would actually make no sense to duo queue or, or trio queue. Your chances of winning go down significantly. It would actually be solo queue or five stack meta. Yeah, I don't know about that one, chief. I'm not sure about that one. You would have a trio stack on your team? Uh, yeah, theoretically, if you duo queued, you'd have a trio stack with you. But a trio and a duo versus a five stack is probably cooked. It might be balanceable, but then you're also, your queue times are probably really long. So if you duo queue now, like in Overwatch 1, DPS players used to duo queue with tank players a lot to get faster queues. But if you're in the wide groups, that means you're going to have longer queue times. It says higher up that it's longer queue times. So... You're gonna have a longer queue time and then potentially face five stacks and get cooked. It means if you duo, you get a trio or a solo. No, it doesn't because it it says wide group of four players. Sorry, we won't allow a wide group of four players to keep because solo players do not join matches with wide groups. So it's not possible you get a solo. That's literally incorrect. So if you're duo queue or more, you can only either get another three stack on your team or if you're a three stack, you can only get a two stack on your team. And then on the other team, it's either a three stack and a two stack or a five stack, which means that the queue times are going to be longer, which also means that your chances of facing a five stack are pretty high, actually. Uh, yeah, that honestly, yeah, that 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 might be cooked, actually. I'm not I don't know about this one, chief. <sighs> I don't know about this one, chief. This is uh, you're OK. You know what? I'm, I, I want to just tell you what's going to happen. This just means 95% of players are just going to play solo queue. This means just 95% of players are going to play solo queue. Because playing duo queue or more, it just basically sets you up for failure. Because there will be stacks that play for fun or to just, you know, practice or whatever it is. And if you play duo queue or trio queue, you're going to be bumping into them. And it's going to be mostly like collegiate teams or contenders teams or tier three teams or hell, even the pro teams, which I was making the prediction earlier. Um... You're just going to get cooked. And so, uh, yeah. Good for solo key players, but uh, if you duo or trio, you might be f I don't know about that one, Chief. I don't know about that one, Chief. Uh, update on stopping levers. We've already made adjustments to discourage leaving unranked games of Overwatch, and there's already a few more changes coming in Season 10. We've also taken a firm stance on levers competitive play for a, and have a new update for that game mode as well. For unranked games, players who leave four in their last 20 games are put on a t cooldown of 20 minutes before they can queue again, with an increase to four hours if they leave at least six of their last 20 games. Whew. We'll be adding two additional tiers, a five minute penalty for leaving two of their last 20 games played, and a 48 hour suspension from queuing any matchmaking mode for those who leave 10 or more. If you leave 10 or more though, you're kind of, you're just, <laughs> you're, you're kind of you're kind of you're kind of causing some problems but uh yeah i mean i said this when i watched the dev video the two the two games won for five minutes is legitimately stupid i'm sorry uh very few players deliberately leave 50 percent or more games uh but we think that this step will further reduce the impact levers can have on unranked overwatch 2 games to work back into good standing competitive now counts towards a player's 20 games played which is good i can't believe it didn't do that already um, yeah, this is, this is genuinely f***ing cooked over here. This is cooked. This is fine. If you're the 10 game plus person, I, I'm sorry. That's just, you shouldn't be doing that. Uh, the comp ones are mostly fine. I think the two games one is a little harsh. Uh, to be honest, 
like two to three games is kind of harsh but at the same time though comp is a little bit more serious so i'm okay with it over here it makes sense um but yeah my biggest problem is there's literally no system to tell you how many of your past games you've currently left and they don't expire that is true actually that is a very good point there isn't a way to track it um and it should i feel like if you're gonna go this hard with something like this you need to be very transparent and very clear because most casual players are not going to understand what's happened to them at all. And I feel like you're just going to piss your like super casual players off. And they're going to be frustrated and confused and pissed, you know? So, competitive play is also receiving a notable addition to its penalty system for leaving games. Players can be suspended from competitive play when they leave any competitive play match. Penalties start off small at 15 minutes, but escalate quickly or quickly escalate if they repeatedly leave games. It can even trigger a season ban, which will disqualify them from the remainder of that competitive season. When players compete s several match competitive, sorry, complete several competitive matches, they'll work back into good standing. See, my only concern with like two to three games is because like what happens like when the servers are fucked? Because like that's happened before, um, and not only do you lose your rank, which is what pisses people off, but not being able to queue for like eight hours, like that's that's kind of that's kind of tough. But I mean, it's comp, so at the same time, I'm kind of okay with it. Now we're introducing an, a rule to competitive play that caps the total number of games you can leave in a season, regardless of how frequent it is. Players who leave 10 competitive matches in a season will be immediately banned for the season. This should help curb those players who deliberately choose to leave a match, thinking they won't have to deal with a lengthy sus suspension if they haven't left their most recent games played. See, here's the problem though, real talk. With both of these, if somebody's like a serial lever, they probably have multiple accounts, you know? Um, so like, this isn't gonna affect the average player, but I don't think it's gonna really curb anything at the same time. I think it's just gonna scare people, you know? It's just gonna scare them more than anything and like, get them annoyed, so. Remember, deliberately leaving or having a disconnection still counts from as leaving. While we understand it's no, often not intentional, it still greatly impacts the high stakes experience that competitive provides. While any players can have a technical issue when playing, it is important not to jump back into competitive play until you are confident that any technical issues is resolved. If you need help troubleshooting disconnections or crashes, be sure to show. Okay, like I understand that, but it, there's, sometimes it's Overwatch. Uh, in the past, that was never really true. Overwatch has always been really good with the surfers, but in the last like six months or so, we've had some we've had some some big hiccups. Um, so, what happens with the technical problems on your side, though? And uh, maybe, maybe I'm, you know, asking a little too much here. Um, but I feel like if you're going to go this hard with punishments, then there should also be punishments, quote unquote, to Blizzard when their servers die. Um, where if you your server dies and you lose a game, you don't get that elo back, right? And I've never been someone that's like, oh, you should get that elo back, right? Because like, shit happens, it's tough, you just move on. But if you're gonna go even harder on it, well, I think it would be fair if you go the opposite way too. Why not give people back their rank if you detected that the servers died and also remove that game, right? Because like, let's say someone has some shaky internet for the, like, like their college internet, right? And they, they disconnect from maybe like six games of ranked a season, right? Let's say six or seven games of ranked a season. <clears throat> but they play 200 or 300 games. Well, you throw in a couple server crashes in there, you're getting kind of close to a, uh, you know, prove it server side, LOL. Yeah, but like, you're also going really hard on these. So it's like, when you say like, oh, we'll prove it. Well, it's like, well, I shouldn't have to prove it because you're the one that's making up these rules, right? And it's like, if you're gonna have potential things that are so aggressive, then there should be accountability on both sides. You know, I, I, I know that's a big ask and I'm not even sure if it'd even be possible, but I wanna at least provide a opposite side. Cause like, if I'm gonna completely be honest with you, the reason why I'm so against all of this is I find it very alarming that Blizzard keeps doubling and tripling and quadrupling down on the lever stuff. And like, don't get me wrong, I think levers and comp shouldn't, is, should be punished and shouldn't happen. 
but like seeing how hard they're going on the quick play stuff like when we saw this first change what like a year ago and it was like if you leave six or more matches you get like a 10 minute quit penalty we were all like whoa 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 what the heck like it's a it's supposed to be a fun game mode why get penalized and here we are today where it's like now it's two games for the minimum you know, like it's getting more and more aggressive, guys. Like now, now, now I'm not, no, I don't know, I'm not too comfortable with it no more. You know what I mean? So, anyways, uh, does Flat see the numbers? No, I'm fucking blind, dude. I can't even read the screen. What's going on, guys? Is there something there? Of course, I can read the numbers, guys. Um, expanding streamer protect. This is a big one. Stream Protect will now be called Hide My Name and be an effective tool for all players, not just streamers. Last year, we introduced features that enable players to hide their account information on their own client with the goal of discouraging disruptive players from watching streamers and attempting to queue into that streamer's game. However, this did not address harassment issues for players who are better known. Okay. <laughs> this, this, should be, this should be the sentence. This paragraph should be titled... Flats wouldn't stop fucking bitching. <laughs> when you hide, when you activate hide in my name, your battle tag will appear as one of several dozen randomly generated battle tags, ranging from Crusher ninety nine to Garlic. Br I know Gavin did this. I love you, Gavin. You are some. You are a funny. Fuck. You are one funny dude. If you don't know the legend of Garlic Bread. Oh man, you're missing out. And many other fun references from Overwatch 2 in our community. This name will be displayed not only for your own game client, but also for all of the players in the lobby. After the match, players can see everyone's actual battle tags by checking out the social menu. Don't worry if you encounter disruptive players and are unsure if they are using a covered battle tag. You can still report any player you encounter during and after the match, which will be reported to that player's account. Okay, so very very small thing i'm just curious so is it also changed my name on my own screen um because like i make content right like i make videos and like people are gonna come in and like why are you smurfing you piece of shit and it's like wait what wait what you know um there's a separate setting for that you can see it in the dev update oh did i miss it Okay, cool. Because I want to see on my screen my own name. My own name should be on my screen. Because like I'm, I'm, I'm. People are gonna be like, "Why are you playing on garlic bread? Huh? You smurfing?" It's like, no, dude. Like, what? Wait, what are you talking about? Um. So I guess let me go look really quick. See if I can find it. Let's see. Hide my fake name, client only. Ah. Aha. I like it. Good. They thought of it. They thought of everything smart okay expanding avoid his teammate avoid his teammate allows players to sorry allows players the choice to not be prepared or sorry be paired with specific players on the same team when finding a match this is a good way to step away from disruptive players or players with a different play style than yours <laughs> who wrote this is this is a kai day did you did you write this I'm writing a hate post about you and smirking as we speak. <laughs> God damn it, fucking. Um, attack zero? Nah, I was gonna. I, I, there was. Yeah, I mean, okay, yeah, kinda actually. Um, <laughs> you know, you know for a fact there's gonna be like, you know, like that tour player who flanks. You get what I'm saying? They should indicators to show players are grouped together. Oh, I agree. I agree. Although I think Duo Q Trio Q is probably dead as of next season. Um, if I'm quite honest. In a future update, uh, you'll be able to add up to 10 players on your Void as teammate list. For most players below Grandmaster, you will likely this will likely allow you to avoid all 10 players on your list. Those on the higher end of the rank ladder may still see some of your avoided players that are lower in the priority especially when your queue times get longer you know they kind of killed two birds with st one stone with this because like sometimes avoids make the game like genuinely impossible to make a match um especially at night 
when there's like not as many people on. So like now they can kind of get around that. I feel like they just kind of open themselves up a little bit while also giving people more avoid slots, you know? <laughs> the current avoid as teammate system allows you to avoid up to three players you encounter. This has been the maximum because adding more slots would make finding matches for players at higher ranks like Grandmaster Champion impossible. Yeah, basically what I was just saying. However, thanks to your feedback, we're going to help give everyone more agency over the players they're paired with on their team. I can't wait till somebody has someone on their avoid list and they get a game with them and they're on their team like, what the fuck? Because they didn't read it. Uh, to better tailor your experience, you can toggle which players you absolutely don't want to play with versus those you would rather avoid if you can help it. When your list is full and you don't want to avoid a new player, they will be added automatically, dropping the player who's been on the list the longest. Don't worry, you can pin any players to ensure they don't fall off your list. This will enable a smoother user experience and allow you to get back into the queue faster. <laughs> I love how there's definitely everyone's gonna do this. There's just gonna be a a pinned. Uh, a, a pinned list. This is gonna be this is gonna be so funny. It's gonna be so funny. Um, mitigating disruptive chat. We never consider it acceptable for anyone to harass, insult, or abuse any other player through chat. We've already taken many steps to identify disruptive chat faster and take action in cases of clearly identified disruptive chat. And soon we'll have updates to improve the chat experience for all players. When a player is action for disruptive chat or not playing fairly in the game, we demote their endorsement rating to level zero. Even new players start at level one, so you can only reach this level if you've been actioned by breaking the blizzard in-game code of contact. conduct. Coming later this year, we are going to prevent anyone with a level zero endorsement rating, so that's not next season, this is in the future, uh, from using any text or voice chat in their matches. I think it was season 12 or beyond is what it said in the... Um, What's it called? Uh, the dev video, I think. These privileges can be restored once a player reaches level one again, which is done by playing your best, helping your team, and communi communicating with the in-game ping system. We also recognize that some players like being disruptive to others while they spectate their friends. Matches. Since it's not possible to report spectators who are disruptive on console platforms and very limited on PC, Access to team and match chat channels will be removed. Friends can still chat with each other through a whisper. Wow, that is actually kind of like a big brain change. Okay, um, and you know what's you know what's really nice about this one? Like, I know it sounds stupid, but this like to me, to me, shows that the community, like the the Blizzard team, is actually really in touch with like, especially like the streamer side, because. I have noticed this. I've never spoken about it. I've never even complained about it. I've never said a word. I've never made a video. I've never even mentioned it on stream. I've never said a word, but I do know it. I have noticed in the last like year that there's a big uptick of like people sniping my games or trying to get into my games or whatever. And then like three or four or five or six friends join. And then they're all sitting there fucking typing, either trying to get chat to laugh or just say like some like fucked up shit. Right. And I never said it. I never complained, whatever, but I noticed there was an uptick in it. That plus the console stuff makes a lot of sense to, to kind of get rid of it. Now, it's not for uh, custom games. So custom games, you can still do whatever, but it's only for like arcade and for quick play. Cause like, you know, it is it is kind of weird. Like why, you know, like if you had a friend that gets in a game with somebody, like you can just, just all join in on them and then just start being annoying. You know, like you, it's weird, but it's so small. It's such a small thing, but you know, to me that, that says to me that they, they pay attention. I appreciate that. Faster reporting. Every day we work to action disruptive players and correct inappropriate behavior in our games. And your reports help us with this. However, we understand it's not easy to report when you're in the middle of a match. We're designing an easier to use interface that should, be that should enable all players to report as soon as they see disruptive behavior. And we look forward to sharing more on this later in the year. Remember, when you report a player as being abusive in either text or voice chat as soon as possible, uh, yeah. Oh, it's easier for our system to better identify the disruptive player's behavior. Yes, that's true. To learn more about how to report players in Overwatch, see our support article. I'm not joking. Like, if you genuinely learn anything from me, this thing is actually, like, a beast. Like, people sometimes complain that, like, oh, like, I report people and nothing ever happens. That used to be true. But genuinely, anytime I report someone for saying something, like, f***ed up in-game, instantly the next day I get a thing. Instantly. Instantly. 
like sorry not instantly it should happen instantly but i get it the next day like you know what i mean like every time boom every right before people and then they get got yeah i've i in the last like six months or so that thing does not f around so if you feel like when you report people nothing happens two tips one do as fast as you can if it's in voice two if it's in game like in game chat and they do it just like hit enter and then open the chat log and then just like report the message directly and it's boom instantly i've reported an obvious cheater i got nothing we're we're we're, we're talking more about behavior than anti-cheat um i thought that was a kind of apparent on what we were talking about here those are two different systems but yeah very different very very different uh introducing player surveys aren't you blizzard support fuck you <laughs> uh we're always watching for your feedback whether it's on social media through communities from our top content creators or other places of note as we continue striving to make overwatch to a sh safer and more inclusive experience for all players we're providing a new way for players to help make their voices heard this is actually such a cool change uh we'll be introducing a new player survey or sorry new player surveys into overwatch 2 we'll randomly choose players whenever they complete a match after the end of match flow including the play of the game and your progression updates if you are selected you will be prompted by a new splash screen with an invitation to participate in an optional survey that allows you to access by clicking the link or scanning the QR code on your phone. Goddamn, the fucking millennials and their goddamn QR codes. Uh, <laughs> you'll have your chance to let us know what you think about new modes, events, and features, along with telling us how we can protect you from disruptive players. We look forward to seeing your participation when this launch we launch this feature in the future. You know what I like about this a lot? genuinely i i see people complain all the time it's like oh they don't listen to us or whatever and like they really do they genuinely really do like but today's overwatch team is very different than overwatch team of the past very fucking different and I, i've said it a bajillion times but nobody ever believes me and one of the things that they always feel like is they don't feel like they get listened to right and here's a great example of having the ability to fight the negative responses of like the loud major ma like loud minority versus like the silent majority that might be happy with something i'll give you an example quick play hacked right the first quick play hacked was like okay wasn't great but everyone hated it the second one was much shorter and honestly i enjoyed the fuck out of it and i feel like a lot of people were like oh yeah it was way better um but you know what though is with stuff like this it at least gives a chance for everyone to like give their feedback all the time and not like not feel like it's they have to go to reddit or they have to go on twitter and scream or they have to go to their favorite content creator and write an absolute fucking novel on why they need to make a video on whatever it is right please stop doing that by the way um anyways it gives you at least a chance to give your own feedback directly and i think that's that's kind of a, that's kind of a big dub you know thanks for playing together to recap our change to grouping up with friends in competitive lever penalties updates and our improved streamer protective launch in season 10. The other features and more will be coming in following seasons. We'll be back with more updates later, so stay tuned as we continue to work on stopping cheating and promoting good teamwork in every match of Overwatch 2. Thanks everyone, and let's have a great game. Um, Kaide, if you're here, it's, isn't it? Th thanks everyone, and let's make a great game. Or is this just like your own spin on it? <laughs> <laughs> ah, you know what? I kind of like it. It's fine. <laughs>